What is going on today, YouTube? Just want to catch you up on some things I've been working on, and uh, yeah, we'll just jump straight into it. So um, this past week, I've been working on the audiobook maker. I'm back to um, adding some enhancements to this. And the um, two things that I'm focusing on, uh, one has been implemented already, is implementing GPT Sovitz. So um, if you don't know what GPT Sovitz is, it's a newer text-to-speech engine that I think is pretty fantastic. So I have implemented that and added that into the audiobook maker. And then um, one more thing is just a, uh, a way for users to upload voices, models, um, without having to place them into specific folders. So making it a little bit more user friendly, uh, some quality of life improvements definitely uh, for the user in this uh, next coming update for the audiobook maker. And yeah, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it, some of the technical implementations and then just um, what's new. So um, from the user end of things, it's not going to seem like there's too much um, added into the audiobook maker. So here we are inside of the um, the interface. So we can load a, oh, let's do like test. We can load a text file. Let's do a small amount of text and erase the audiobook I already had. And then we can toggle the text-to-speech engines here. And we got this new GPT sovitz engine that we can utilize and uh yeah we can select what version we want to use uh three two one four it defaults to four that's the best one in my opinion and then if you upload some gpt and vitz models that you train from gpt sovitz you can use those as well and then you've got reference voice language um japanese chinese uh english and then i think korean uh, is are some of the voices that um, or languages that GPT Sovitz allows, and let's just start a generation. So, uh, I'm using this reference audio Farina from um, uh, Genshin, and it's going to start um, generating the sentences. So here we have it here, and then we'll take a listen to it. So uh, let's quickly play this first bit of audio. Let's listen real quick. Narration of Ray Zero using text to speech, Marine Edition. So there we go. That is uh, GPT Sovitz. Um, and I think where GPT Sovitz excels is in conversational speech. Um, so I think what we or what I would utilize GPT Sovitz for in the audiobook maker is anywhere where there is dialogue uh, because it, uh, it can do things like laughter. Um, let me just change the sentence right here. Um, and maybe do something like, ha ha ha, that was a close call. And then regenerate this chosen mm -hmm. sentence. Uh, probably have a bug there. I'll regenerate in bulk instead here. Um, and then let's make sure that it regenerated. Uh, let's see, regenerate in bulk. Okay, let's listen to this. <laughs> That was a close call. So there it excels, I believe, in conversation. That's where I like to see or that's where I like to use GPT Sovitz. Um, and especially for chatbots, you know, GPT Sovitz, great because conversation is what you're trying to have with them. But for other parts of maybe uh, let's load in a different text file uh, for other texts files or for other, um, let's say, like audiobooks, it might not be the best uh, for enunciating uh, specific um, specific words. So you would probably want a larger model that has been trained on audiobook audio. Um, let me see if I can come up with an example of where GPT Sovitz might um, be a little lacking in. Um, well, I don't see any sentences here. But for example, if I changed a sentence um, inside of here and tried to do something like GPT uh, so so bits is great, and then I go to um, generate this sentence here. Um, let's see, make sure it loads here. If I go to generate something like this. Um, it won't uh, say this out correctly, so let's take a listen. GPT, so V-I-T-S is great. So it does that a lot where if it's uh, capitalization or if it's some words, it'll it'll um, say each letter out instead of the 
uh, pronunciation of it. I think there are ways that we could solve that with um, text normalization for this specific engine, but um, yeah, it it uh, it runs into this quite a bit. So if uh, there are words that it doesn't work with, that is going to be something that people would have to play around with. But this isn't a GPT service review. Just going to say that this has been um, implemented into the maker here. So that'll be a nice addition for those of you who are using this. And then I've got this upload voices window that I've been working on. And it's still in progress um, because of the way that I'm trying to implement it is, um, is a dynamic um updating window or the components dynamically change so if i go to tortoise it requires different types of models ai model tokenizer if i go to gpt sovitz gpt sovitz model if i go to f5 tts requires f5 tts model tokenizer stuff like that um is uh i had to implement that into the code to make it modular so that um i could set up just a configuration file instead of specifically um, creating kind of like a rule for each engine in the Python code. So uh, for those of you interested, what um, I do for the Texas speech engines is I have these configuration files and each configuration file tells the window how to build the um, whatever settings I might need to store for it. So for example, I've got tortoise here. I created a new key called upload parameters with its own dictionary that has all of these different um, dictionaries inside of here that tells the audiobook maker how to build the window and how to assign different um, components like different text boxes, different names, so on and so forth. So I had to re-implement that or I had to implement that into the um, the view code for the class that I created for it. And that is, um, and that requires kind of like this dynamic um, method that creates parameters based on um, certain values that I pass it, yada, yada, yada. And so basically, this just allows me to add additional engines in the future. Um, it makes adding new things in the future much easier. So that's why I'm sticking to this, this way of making the audiobook maker instead of specifically specifying it in the code, like GPT Sovitz requires, requires these items, F5DTS requires these. So the modularization of it, I think um, upfront is a little bit more work, but um, down the line, when I add these things, it's it's cake. So when I added the GPT Sovitz um, model into here, um, now this is just me rambling a little bit and just just talking about it because um, I w I haven't touched this in like five months. I made this configuration file for GPT Sovitz, and then it just worked. And I was like, wow, what a good design that I did! Clapping myself on the back or patting myself on the back um, for this design. Um, you know, it's nothing too crazy. And all I need to do is specify a loading um, a loading function inside of this TTS engine. So just how to load GPT Sovitz, um, gives uh, take all the parameters, load it, pass back the pipeline or the TTS engine. And then that um, will then be used to generate audio inside of the uh, function that calls to GPT Sovitz. And all of this, just I only need to modify this function right or this uh, module right here in order to implement new engines and just specify uh, what parameters I need, um, take those in, all of that fun stuff from the configuration file, and it just works. It builds all the components that I need inside of the window uh, dynamically, and it just makes life a lot easier. So. Um, yeah, I'm glad that this worked um, immediately when I implemented it like five months later uh, without me having to go through the code too much again. I did have to kind of refresh myself on what um, what I did to make this work just so I could understand it a little bit. And yeah, no, that's just me um, looking at my code and being like, wow, what a good job that I did. But um, maybe I shouldn't be doing that because you should always be critical a little bit of what you're making. 
Uh, usually I am, but yeah, that's just one thing that still kind of surprised me when I when I implemented it this week. Um, but where where did, where did I leave off? Um, the rambles. So yeah, TTS engine configuration file. For the most part, that is really all I've been working on uh, for this because um, it required uh, still a decent amount of time in order to do this. Um, it wasn't a complete cakewalk. I still had to remember how to do some of the uh, instantiations and all of the different um, little quirks of the audiobook maker because of how much I tried to modularize it. Um, sometimes things might not be as intuitive as uh, you might think. So I had to go look at those bits of code again just to kind of understand how they worked. Um, and then... Yeah, I guess there's not much more on the audiobook maker side of things. So that's going to be version 3.6. I have pushed it into a 3.6 branch um, if you did want to try it out. But I don't have any instructions on how you can get GPT Sovitz installed yet. Um, I will be writing that up once I merge this branch into the main branch. And then um, you guys will be able to try it. Um, I will be repackaging it and uh, making it... Uh, uh, the 3.6 release available to the members of the channel at the packages tier um, and you guys will get access to it or if you already have access to it you'll get um, the update for it or access to that update uh, when I release it and I was thinking about increasing the price of it it's still up in the air for when I want to do it but um, I originally wanted to um, make a trainer for the audiobook maker and because the trainer was going to require quite a bit more and um, I was going to increase the price for that but one thing about models being released nowadays is that zero shot is actually getting better and better so I have pushed kind of the trainer a little bit back um, in the audiobook maker uh, just because some of these zero shot models can be used um, readily already and all I need to do is define uh, how to call that uh, TTS engine. I guess one other thing that I should say that I've been working on is uh, just this GPT Sovitz package. So I did need to modify and make the GPT Sovitz package installable um, so that I could call it and run it. So I made some additional modifications for this uh, just to be compatible with the audiobook maker. Um, Nothing too crazy. I just made sure that all of the uh, imports were um, being, um, what is it, named correctly to uh, the new structure that I have inside of the code or the library here. So, yeah, just me talking about some of the uh, updates I've been working on, some of the technical stuff I've been um working on and I do want to uh, go and review some newer uh, TTS engines that are out and released. I took a quick look at um, Archive and it seems like there are quite a bit of um, TTS engines that have been released uh, recently and it's it's been increasing um, in frequency um, recently so I remember there was like a few months where like nothing good got released but uh, since um, like January I haven't really been looking too much but there have been a bunch of new different releases that I still got to take a look at so if you're still watching this video and you have any recommendations for TTS engines for me to look at please comment down below and uh, I'll get around to looking at them but yeah you know we got things like this I guess this flex speech just got released today uh, or yesterday, I wonder if they have a um, link to some audio samples. Flex speech. Um, I don't know if they have any uh, any links to a GitHub where I can listen to anything. Um, but uh, I will be going through this and just checking some things out just to just to see if we got anything new in the uh, the area of TTS and seeing if uh, we can could add some um, new models into the audiobook maker and anything else that I've been working on. But um, 
I guess one more thing, one more random thought that come, came to my head um, as I'm rambling along here is I know I had a project in here, which was uh, the Open Neurosomer project. I haven't touched it since December of last year. Um, I think I might, I think I might start working on it again, but no promises. Basically, that's just a um, AI chatbot or an AI VTuber um, that, uh, you know, you'd be able to talk to and conversate with and stuff like that. Um, but there's uh, already some of that stuff out there on YouTube. There's this content creator. His name is Just Rayan, who is doing these AI waifus on YouTube. Uh, the technology behind it is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, maybe if uh, you're interested in those type of chatbot things, go take a look at his, uh, his videos on YouTube. But, yeah, I don't want to ramble on too much. I've been rambling probably for the past 10 minutes. But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're a member of the channel, thank you so much for supporting me. Very much appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys later.